Our next comedian is a storyteller comedian. She does a one-woman show um, about being a Latina in America. She is the embodiment of uh, don't mess with Puerto Rico. <laughs> so um, my Boricua friend, <laughs> Sasha Burgos Conde. <laughs> She gets props for saying my name right. Um, I was really nervous, but this is exactly what I thought it would be. This speak out is like, it's like some kind of feminist AA meeting in an alternate universe. Abortion's anonymous. And on this planet, it is ruled by a matriarchy. So I just wanna do this right. I feel I should start with, hello, my name is Sasha and I had an abortion. Thank you. This is my first meeting. As you already know, I was raised Puerto Rican so, and Catholic. So growing up, the message was, don't ever have sex. And then privately between my mom and us sisters, if you do have sex, just don't get pregnant. But if you do get pregnant, I will personally take you down to Planned Parenthood, and we will take care of this. Luckily, mom didn't have to force anything on me. This happened after I was in college and out of the house. And I remember when I found out I was pregnant, I was going to an art school and my boyfriend was unemployed. <laughs> yeah, so I remember two things very specifically that I said verbatim. First, I said, calm down. It's not like I'm having it. I'm totally having an abortion. That's what I told my boyfriend on the phone when I gave him the bad news. Um, he was really silent. I don't think it helped him calm down at all. The other thing I remember saying is, I'm pregnant and I don't want to be. And that is what I said to every OBGYN in the city with a nice Russian receptionist until I found one who could help. And they all have Russian receptionists. I don't know why. Uh, I, I'm just telling it how it is. Lucky for me, I was still covered under my mother's health plan. As a full-time student and part-time waitress, that was like the best thing that could happen to me during my abortion. Um, oh, there's so much I wanna say. Oh, okay, having an unplanned pregnancy is like being attacked by an invasive species. As far as I'm concerned, it is not a baby until it comes out of my body and can survive without leaching vital nutrients. Having an unplanned pregnancy is like going to war with no exit strategy. I don't have a joke there, but I really wanted to say something really meaningful about Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so I like to think of my womb as private property. This is prime real estate in a trendy neighborhood, and thou shalt not live in utero rent free. Squatters rights, do not apply. I just want to talk about science just for a minute because as an organ donor, I would have been delighted. I would have gladly given my aborted fetus to science. Like I would have signed that informed consent form, no problems. Because why not? I don't need it. You can't take it with you, right? Um, <laughs> we're supposed to reduce, reuse, and recycle anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying, I wouldn't want to be wasteful. And I would have been really proud to know, oh my god, embryonic stem cells from my aborted fetus cured cancer. <laughs> Who's not going to be a proud mama? Like, I, my baby cured cancer. <laughs> but the other side of that token is that you never know when your government is going to take your DNA and start a clone army. <laughs> so. You know, sometimes these decisions, it's like rolling the dice. You cure cancer, they start a clone war with your DNA. It, I don't know, there's no in between, right? It's like the virgin whore complex. I don't know. Um, basically, these aren't the girls you're looking for. We're all women here. All right. Oh, I forgot, I had an abortion on my birthday. Um, 
it was like a technical thing. I was about to cross some kind of important timeline, and there was no way to reschedule it. And it was the surgical kind, because I had health insurance. And since I'm Puerto Rican, that's like all the white privilege and none of the guilt. <laughs> um, OK. But seriously, the worst part is I had an abortion on my birthday. And the worst part was that I had to wake up before dawn to get to my appointment on time. OK. Do you have any idea how long it takes to get from Brooklyn to a hospital in Manhattan on the F train? I'm having an abortion, for God's sake. The least you could do is let me sleep in. <laughs> and my boyfriend at the time is not a morning person. So on top of everything, I have to deal with that because he wanted to come and be supportive. Anyway, I was in such a hurry to get back into my pre-pregnancy shape. <laughs> um, I thought I was immune to that kind of social pressure, but there I was working out <laughs> the day after my abortion. Um, and it was surgical and it hurt. And I just want to say, I just, I just wanted to get back to my pre-fetus body. And, and I think that's okay. Thank you, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>